Hello my lovelies, welcome to my little cottage by the sea, the place where I like to stitch and craft my way to a vintage inspired and sustainable lifestyle. In today's video I'm going to be sewing a new circle skirt for my wardrobe. The circle skirts that I've made are really one of my most worn items. You have this really beautiful vintage fabric that I bought when I was out treasure hunting and I thought it would be perfect to make a circle skirt and I also have my new pdf version of my circle skirt pattern drafting and sewing guide. This also includes an extended size range so it goes from an 8 to a 32 size and it has all the instructions you need, all the mathematicals have been done and so on. Let's crack on with the sewing. My new PDF takes you through how to pattern draft and sew a full circle skirt. The booklet contains all the sums that you need and all the techniques that you need and also includes a little doodle of my character Myrtle May wearing Dior's 1947 new look bar suit. I tried to make all of my patterns and resources as pretty as possible but also very useful and full of tips and tricks. I'm going to be deviating a little bit and sewing a couture waistband on this skirt that I'm going to be sewing out of a really lovely vintage fabric I found whilst out treasure hunting. I think initially or originally it was some kind of bedspread and it may come from the 30s or 40s but it's the most perfect shade of blush pink with this lovely jacquard slightly Marie Antoinette design so perfect for a full circle skirt. When I'm checking to see if thread is a good match to fabric I like to unwind a little bit and lay it across to see how well the colours blend and I've been really loving these fabric weights by Foxglove and Field. I'm not really one for a gimmicky sewing accessory but these just fill my heart with joy and they're very very useful. cut out the circle skirt using the instructions given in my um, circle skirt pattern cutting sewing guide. Really pleased with this fabric actually, it looks so so pretty, especially with all this volume. Very um, excited to, to make this one. I'm going to be sewing it using vintage techniques shall we say. When I'm um, I kind of don't like to say historically accurate techniques because I don't really have any way of knowing and I do feel that with a lot of dressmaking a lot of the techniques haven't really changed that much so in a way we're all kind of dabbling in history in our own little ways because um, dressmaking has been fairly consistent in the hows and the whys of it. Anyway history lecture over. One little tip actually because I'm going to be making the waistband using couture techniques and showing you how I construct a waistband because I'm notoriously bad at waistbands and I'm never very happy with how they turn out so this is the way that I have um, decided to do a waistband that makes it really good quality and um, well made, consistent and and last. So with the waistband, the pattern, what I always do, just so you can see here, is I just always cut my waistbands just longer than it, it says on the, the pattern. So I do this whether I'm drafting a pattern or it's a commercial pattern that I'm using. I just always cut the waistband fabric and bits and pieces just longer and um, i found that that gives me a better result. So I'm going to start sewing and it should be a fairly quick and straightforward project. The first thing I do is I stay stitch around the waistband 
on the circle skirt because it's a curve it can really stretch so you do need to be careful and stay stitching it really helps and then I'm finishing all the side seams and center back seam by just doing a very simple turn and sewing in place I don't think this is really going to prevent the fabric from fraying all that much but I didn't have binding which would have been my preference and I didn't want to overlook because as I said I wanted to sew this in as accurate a way to the time the late 40s early 50s as I possibly could. I've sewn all the side seams and the centre back seam and I did that turn and turn. Probably still going to fray a little bit but you could bind these seams actually and if I'd had binding I would have done that but I didn't have enough. So I'm putting in my zip, just a skirt length zip, can't remember like how long this is, like 22 centimetres, something like that using a center lap zip which is my favorite so i'm going to sew that in and then i am going to crack on with the waistband and show you how i do that i'm now working on my waistband so i've cut out the um waistband a bit longer as i said and i've interfaced it and i'm not a fan of interfacing if you spend time with me here will know that I don't really love interfacing but it's important sometimes to stabilize a fabric so what I've been doing which is a bit of a discovery is I've been getting a uh, jersey interfacing so it's still iron on but it's got a bit of stretch and when this irons onto fabric it it still has its um, malleable quality whereas the standard interfacing just makes everything go like cardboard and then it creates like a funny thing when you wear it it makes the waistbands not sit nicely so i am using this now and then what i'm using to create a, a kind of a density a more structured waistband is um horse hair which is used for tailoring and I buy mine from Whaley's and I will link below and you can sort of mould this and use it for sort of tailoring reinforcements. What I'm basically doing is on the on the waistband here possibly you can see we've got the centre front we've got seam allowance seam allowance and then the fold line so this is three centimetres and three centimetres. I've got a very narrow um like depth of waist i'm basically hips and then torso and my waist is is short so there's no point me going over that and i'm just drawing on here three centimeters depth and then going along not into the overlap necessarily just doing a strip three centimeters wide by the length of my waistband that I've cut out so I'm laying that on and then I'm gonna use that as the reinforcement you could also use um like waistband grow grain ribbon or something like that but I'm I'm sold on this I really like using this I've ironed the fusible interfacing over the entire waistband piece the wrong side of it obviously and I've also pressed up the seam allowance because it's so much easier to do that when the fabric is flat and before you've sewn it to the skirt I pin the waistband to the waistline of the skirt and then I'm going to sew it together on the sewing machine I've decided that with the horsehair reinforcement I am going to reinforce the overlap because I've realized I really don't want a floppy overlap it won't work at all but I'm not going to have the reinforcement in the seam allowances now this is all sewn all the way around and you can see there's quite a big overlap here I am going to make a decision about how how wide or long I suppose long remember there is seam allowance as well so I think 
sort of about two and a half centimeters an inch or so is is pretty good because there's going to be a like a a hook and bar there to fasten that or you could do a, a button but i having tried buttons and the hook and bar i prefer the hook and bar so i'm going to get rid of the excess so now what i can do is uh put in this horse hair strip so the horse hair strip sits on this side and you want it to go up to the seam allowance there and what i'm going to do is i'm going to pin this in place all the way around so it's a little bit fiddly but essentially what you do just lay that on your waistband and then fold the seam allowance from the skirt top of the skirt and the waistband up onto there and just pin it in place do that all the way around and then what I'm going to do is just tack that in place and when that is folded over you get a nice waistband that's still comfortable but it maintains its shape and if you double up layers of this the more layers you use the more sturdy your um, skirt waistband will be. I then tack the waistband seam up onto that horse hair which secures the reinforcement in place. I love hand stitching actually, it's so therapeutic and methodical. And then this is what it looks like when it's all in place and the next thing is to sew the ends of the waistband, that overlap bit. I'm going to sew either side of where that horse hair is laying. And then when I've done that, I snip the corners and the excess just so that I get a nice crisp edge as far as I possibly can. And I turn that through the right way and make sure that the corner is nice and crisp and sharp. The next thing is to pin the seam allowance over in folding the waistband seam. I pin it down and then take my time leisurely hand sewing this with just a simple slip stitch in place. You can of course do this on the machine but as I wanted to focus on some couture sewing techniques here, especially with this couture waistband, I felt that spending some time sewing this would be a lovely way to spend an afternoon. I then hand sew a hook and bar onto the skirt. You can of course do a button and buttonhole if you want. I just feel that this helps the waistband lay smoother, especially if you then wear a belt over the top of it. I make sure that I sew this so that the overlap actually goes underneath rather than over the top of the waistband, which I hope makes sense. And then leave the skirt to hang before hemming for at least 24 hours and realign the hem once that time has gone if you need to. I'm using bias binding to hem the skirt so I just sew that all the way around and then I understitch the bias binding and the skirt hem which helps create a really really beautiful crisp hemline for a skirt. This is my preferential way of hemming a circle skirt but by all means you could just do a turn and turn hem or you could overlock and top stitch it in place and then I slip stitch the bias binding up the hem up which takes forever because there's about five and a half meters in the hem of this skirt and voila 
the circle skirt is sewn and I'm absolutely in love. Lots of twirling shall now ensue. I hope you've enjoyed and found this sewing tutorial useful. If you'd like to grab a copy of my PDF pattern drafting and sewing guide then I'll pop the links below. If you've enjoyed this sewing tutorial and enjoyed spending time with me in my little cottage by the sea then do give this video a thumbs up because your support is so wonderful and really really helps me and my channel grow and if you're not already a subscriber then it would be so lovely if you could take the time to subscribe I love to share my sewing adventures with you. I hope that wherever you are in the world, my lovelies, you are keeping very safe and well. And I will see you soon for some more sewing adventures. Bye.